Hello, Just Jacks here, and today back with the UV resin. Last time we did doggy success. Though we did learn through trial and error, and it did come out success. I thought it would come out a bit squiff because it was still quite wet on the underside. Because I thought I wouldn't be able to flip it and light it on the reverse side because it was a mold similar in lack of transparency to this one but it does it did and that is good to know so next time we do we revisit doggy there's sequins everywhere we can come back to that and give it another go and do it with the knowledge of flipping it and not moving it so we'll get a better end results even though that is really good I'm quite happy with that so that being said mermaid's time I gave you a little sneaky peek of this one in the last video but for those of you who didn't see it here she is how cool it's gonna be quite interesting to do I'm gonna try and put white in the bone bits leave the rest clear white face and then i've got blue shimmer for the hair and holographic chunky glitter that i'm going to try and pop in there too so that is what we're going to try and do today so let's get brush white and see if we can fill these bits I've got a feeling it's going to sort of go everywhere but as long as we can get a fair amount in the groove the second that this flicks over it's it it's static it's just spread in the second that I touch or hover over I'm gonna see if I can rub it off where we don't want it get it in really thick where we do want it that's what I'm going to try or <laughs> looking at how far it's spread I think if I rub anywhere yeah, it's not really going to do anything as long as it's thick or as bold as possible in the grooves we can accept that the rest is just you know she's glowing she can be glowing we can accept that Now for the hair. Let's try. This is a bit more controlled. It doesn't want to static around like the white did. That is her hair too, that's alright, I thought all wibbled. Ok. 
Okay. Let's see what happens if we pop some of this holographic. Chunky glitter in the hair too. See what we got. See what we get. That looks pretty cool. We only want this in the hair. Don't really want it in the face. We might have the odd speck on the face, but that's okay. We can we can live with that. Let's see how that comes out. Oh yes, we're not quite prepared now, are we? Let me get my lights. Get this ready, because when I went to plug this in, that turned off. So I don't think the first part recorded. What I did in that first part was I did a little shot which I'll do again now to show you this is what we're working on Miss Sparkly Mermaid bones here and what I did in that first part which may or may not have recorded was I applied white shimmer to the bony areas blue shimmer to the hair areas and chunky holographic glitter also to the hair. Let's just get this UV resin applied. <laughs> and hopefully, it's definitely recording now, we'll have no more recording hiccups. So um, I'm going on with the show. I'm not going to wash this off and put it all back on again. We'll save that for next time because we'll obviously be using this again. Right, let's get filling with the UV resin. Now I'm not worried about the keyring aspect so I'm gonna happily go past that and if it seeps into it, it seeps into it. I just want to do the mold itself. Thinking about it, I should have done black around the eye, shouldn't I? Well we're definitely going to be revisiting this mold then aren't we? I feel like we're getting there. Right, I think. We're looking good and level. And I think I can see quite a few bubbles appearing. So, lighter. I am going to invest in a candle lighter because that will be easier to do. Because that's one of those with a body like this, but it has a long bit with a lighty bit on the end. So that will make this easier to do. I think we're 
okay. I want you to look at the back of my head. I'll make sure there's no more bubbles. Okay. Torch first. And, well, this bit will either be sped up, cut to the end, or you'll watch it all and you'll hear me chat. Depends what happened with the first part of the recording. Whether the camera just turned itself off because I unplugged it, even though it's charged, or I didn't hit, or I hit record twice, or I thought I hit record. One of those three things happened with the first part. We will see come editing, and then you'll see come uploading. <clears throat> Either way, we will be coming back to this mold and trying it again with a bit more finesse. In different colours, I might try and white the bones again, but invest in some white, white. Um, or we'll just do her like a glowing fishbone colour. Maybe try the chameleon powders. I might invest in some more. We're definitely going to be black in her eyes and her little bony mouth next time. And a different colour for the hair. Not even just try all holographic stuff. Or just all shimmer. Or just plain. We'll see. Shimmer seems appropriate for a mermaid though. Mermaid bones or no. It definitely seems appropriate. And as well, thinking about it, I want to invest in some metallic powders. I also saw on, I mentioned in the last video, Let's Resin, I was checking them out. They had some, um, I can't remember what words they used, but it was essentially, you know, heat effect powders. So depending on the temperature, it'll depend on the colour. How much fun are they going to be to play with? Oh my days. If they work how they say they do, I think they're worth investing in to have a go. I can't remember what it was exactly. I think it was it was six or eight for about twenty pounds. So I'm gonna have a look, see if there's a better deal out there, because I'm all up for a good deal. Um, and then if not, I will bite the bullet and invest in them and trust that Let's Resin won't let me down. And then we can have some fun playing with heat. Also going to take this opportunity, edited or not, to drink my tea because it's going to go cold. Last one on this side. And then we'll flip her over. Even though she's a shallow one, I'm still going to, I'm going to do what's been working. But since um, it's not transparent, I'm going to do what I did with the dog and just have it rest in above. For I, I'm going to go one turn because this mold is also a lot thinner. I went on for I went on for two turns, so four minutes in total on the dog mold because that's really thick. If I show you the mold itself is shallow enough to work with. But from like its deepest point through to the back there is quite a thick 
mould. You can see that there. So it had quite a bit to penetrate. This one's really thin. Like if I hold it up to the light, you can see most of the detail through it. So I'm just going to have it do one on the back, which is what I do for the clear moulds. And as for this guy who I also showed last time, I've got a little sort of like koi, koi fish. I um, I might give that a go next time. And I'll definitely use the chameleon powders for that because I think they're going to work a charm for a koi. They look rather nice. And that is definitely going to be done in layers. I'm not going to do that one in a one because that's a really deep mould. I'm going to hold that so you can see it. And that is pretty much all mould for the fin at least. The fish itself I'd probably do, I'd probably brave it and do it as a one -er because this fin goes all the way down. I'll put you there. I'm going to do that in layers, like fin first and then I think I'm going to play it really safe with this guy and I'll do fin first with a little bit of body or just plain outright fin first, then body, and then so like I think it's his dorsal fin, and then his I can't remember what the side fins are called. We're calling them side fins. And his tail fin. Be the last layer. So we might do him in three. So that means we could play the different colours a bit more easier. So we might make the fins one colour, the body another, and the dorsal fin one, well, all fins collectively one colour, and the body itself a different colour. So that's going to be fun to play with for different reasons. And I had a look, some of you would already know, I always give these a little clean with the nail varnish remover. Um, but I did have a little look, so I really want to take care of these, especially when I come across ones that I love as much as that one. Uh, best way to clean them, warm soapy water. So like, you know, washing up liquid style. So that's what I did. And it is lovely and clean now. So it's just good practice as well. Always clean your moulds after you've used them. Then they're ready for you for next time. There's no gunk built up on them. There's no crusty bits that you don't want there built up on them. They'll always be good to go. Fingers crossed, this one comes out fine. Now's the telling time. It's not sticky, it just needs a little rest in here because it's still quite warm. So I'm gonna let that rest while I put this away because I am done for the day. And this is final bit of recording for today's session for me. And I'm going to take my girlies for their W and think about food. That's my plan for the rest of the day after cleaning up here, of course. So I can crack on again tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow yet. I've got a few things lined up. Yeah, unsure. Be a surprise. Surprise day. Let me pop that back over there. You don't want to go in. There you go. But you might be a little wobble wobble here and there and my arms are jumbling around the place. Let me connect with him. All right, let's have a look. Well, she doesn't sound sticky. Okay. 
she's pretty cool. I think she just needs to rest for a moment. I might. She's a tiny, tiny bit tacky. So I think even when it's shallow like this, stick it on for two. So I'm going to give her another blitz in a moment. She's come out interesting. Let's put it like that. Let me zoom in so you can see what I can see. So, few bubbles. I think that might be where I put the powder on too thick, maybe. They're all pretty much situated and getting as close as possible around her knuckles her hand a little bit on the breastbone and the rib cage and a tiny one on the eye there maybe there too i don't think the hair did too bad the rest on there so you can see now i am going to finish here, give her another blast, because I don't think she's quite done, she's a little bit tacky. So even if it's a thin one like this, see how thin that is, we're still going to give it four minutes on reverse when it's a mould that's not transparent. So still learning, but that's okay. That's how we progress in life. Learn and don't repeat the mistakes. Improve yourself where possible and never give up. Keep going. Yeah, they are definitely holes, aren't they? Bubbles. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much for stopping by and checking me and my channel out. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you're new to resin, I hope you're learning alongside me. Um, if you're old to resin, give me all the tips and tricks you know and I will try them out. Thank you all so much. Like if you like what you see. Comment if you've got something to say. Subscribe if you really like what you see and you want to know more. And you want to know more and you want to see more and know when it's coming. Thank you so much, take care and see you in the next one.